know so much much what was your driving force to, well to, to keep you your, your 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 mind going to get you where you are now well like i said you know when the lady told me her name is chanel she said sis she was broke for 30 years so is either I'm going to be broke for another 30 years for another 30 years or do something about it. And this is what I train on every, every day. Like if you've been broke for 30 years, you've been broke for 60 years. Okay. So the next 60 you plan on being broke or you plan on trying to figure out how to get to this money. Right. So, I mean, again, I was scared to go broke. Like again, for real, you know what I'm saying? So even now that's the driving force. I don't want to be broke. I got kids. I got a husband. I got a house. I got this. I got all types of shit going on. Like, if I go broke, then what? Everything else is done too. You know what I'm saying? So, again, something has to drive you. Unfortunately, we don't know about wealth. We don't understand the money. We don't understand how to invest. We don't understand how to save. All we do is just go to work and hope and pray and wish that everything works out. And then when nothing works out, now we blame the government. We blame our parents. We blame the job when really it's you, sis. <laughs> I'm very close about that. Yes. Yeah. I love you. And yeah. here's the thing. Because when we was at your house and you was teaching us and they're setting, one thing I like that you said is that you teach your children to try everything. But when you have a broke yes. mindset, most people try one thing and quit. I literally met this young lady at the airport that did e-commerce. Mm -hmm. And because she thought it was an overnight quick scheme, her, her husband lost 10 racks. Mm-hmm. So they weren't willing to try again because they thought that it's one and done. I'm mm -hmm. like, well, did y'all do any research? Was the, was the person that introduced you credible? Like, did y'all even mm -hmm. um, sat down and have a conversation? Yep. And she could explain that. Yep. So how is it important to, to try everything to see what you don't like and end up seeing where, what direction you want to go? Well, because here's the thing. <laughs> People have to understand that life is abundant. Life is prosperous. But if you right here, you're not going to see the prosperity. You're not going to see the abundance. If you're only making 30 grand a year and you're struggling, it's impossible for your mind to expand and say, you know what? There's more for me. Right? So you really got to say, you know what? I want more. Right. I want more in life. And this really should be the driving force. Right. For people to say, you know what? I don't want to be broke no more. I don't want my kids broke no more. I don't want my husband broke. I don't want my wife broke. I don't want the next generation. I don't want my nieces and nephews. I don't want none of them broke. See, we are here to break generational curses. Right. And see, and if we understand that we take it serious. Right. Even when you guys was at my house, like literally I train in my sleep. Mm. I teach in my sleep like I do this so much. It's crazy. I could do it anywhere. Right. So now what happens is it starts to compound and then I start to help myself. Right. To become better by saying it so much and doing it so much. And then now the people also around me is either you're going to leave or you're going to change with me. Right. Because I'm that's all I talk. Anybody around me, my friends, husband, kids, that's all I talk. Money, success, wealth, breaking generational curses. What's the next book we reading? Me and my kids, my daughter just came down. I was like, oh, my, when we having wealth talk because she going away tomorrow. Yes, yes, oh, so, yes, yes, so, yes. So I want to make my announcement now. I want to make my announcement now. Because since you want to know why, I got to make my announcement now. You know, God gave me to start a podcast on financial literacy, right? Because mm -hmm. I feel as though a lot of us, especially in our community, we're overly talented. We're compensated when it comes to being naturally gifted. Mm -hmm. However, because we don't know what's more important, we end up getting exported in the process. So yeah. because of you, mm -hmm. God gave me the name to name my, my next podcast, Wealth Talk. Mm -hmm. Wealth Talk, right? Good. And I okay. want you to be the first guest on Island to bless the podcast. Oh, you nice. You need to tap in what you know. Nice. Yes, nice. Knowing how to understand how to borrow, borrow from life insurance mm -hmm. and not have to be penalized. Mm -hmm. Know how to trade. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Cool to me. Mm -hmm. That's her expertise. Mm -hmm. That's yep. her line of duty. Mm -hmm. And like she said, she does it in her sleep. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, 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 that's the announcement I want to make. I thank you for that because mm -hmm. you, you was a part of that inspiration. 
Nice, That's nice. Beautiful. Congrats. Congrats to you. Right. Congrats. Yeah. So even this weekend, I had an amazing event. Unfortunately, you guys wasn't able to come. 300 women. Wow. My wow. friend had a 10-year anniversary. We had free wigs, free installs, free food, free liquor. We was turning up. Okay. What? But the biggest thing was women came in there broken and left like they was on top of the world. Yeah. Yep. Beautiful. Literally left like they were on their hair was nice. They was flying with their hair. They was looking all cute. Everything. They got lashes done, makeup done, everything. They got free clothes. I'm telling you, it was something to see. The men that was there, they were standing like, what the hell is going on here? Yes. Yes. They couldn't believe it. They was like, they was like, coach, come here, man. What's really going on here? I was like, women are really online. For four, five, ten hours, so they can get their free hair, they free slay, free food, free liquor, and be empowered at the same time. Facts. Man. Literally. So, you know, I was on the mic talking about financial literacy. I'm talking about wealth. I'm talking about us unity and unifying and, you know, all coming together. And everybody just standing there like, yo, she the real deal, yo. Like, she really talking about this. Like, you ain't got no script or nothing. No, bro, I do this in my sleep. Yeah, I see that first year when we were in the house. When we were in the house, coach was just going, breaking it down. Yep. Like, the system. Like, and then people don't realize how important wealth is. Right. Like, this moment, like when, 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 you're, when you're stuck inside of a poverty mindset. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So long, like you said, that self work, that self talk. I love that you do that with your daughters. Mm -hmm. I respect you so much mm -hmm. for that. For, mm -hmm. for when you talk to them, you teaching them at a young age, yep. coming up. Like, listen, start investing in yourself at this age. So when mm -hmm. you get to where I am, like mm -hmm. you said, you started with the lessons. Mm -hmm. So when they get to, to to your age, they're gonna be like, they're gonna they're gonna be doing it mm -hmm. way before it's like mm -hmm. time to do it in the sleep. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be pushing themselves. Right. So let me ask you this, Coach. Um. What, 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 um, do you have like a an inspiration that you listen to or somebody who you listen to, like an author or, because you know, you got the ETs out there, you got the Les Browns, the Myra Goldens, like what, what, um, who do you listen to that actually? So every morning, okay. me and my kids, we listen to Earl Nightingale, The Stranger Secret. Nightingale, okay. Let's go. And I listen to anything Abraham Hicks. Yep. Anything, anything Abraham Hicks and The Strangest Secret every day. The Strangest Secret mm -hmm. is still a bestseller to this day. I remember first listening to that audio, right? Mm -hmm. When you say success, success is a success of a worthy mm -hmm. ideal. Yeah. Means what, what's mm -hmm. important to you yep. is successful. If your job is important to you over everything else, and you're that's what dictates your success. Yep. Right. Yep. Yep. It's true. That's the great, great. So how do your kids, how do your daughters respond to that? I mean, seeing what you do, um, you know, living with the entrepreneur as their mom, like, like what's Well, they're inspired, of course. You know, they're inspired. Wow. My kids are on board. Like, my kids, I have my kids. I pay them to help me, you know, with my business. So my kids are on board 100%. Like, even when you guys came to my house, my daughter was the one who who brung up the board, wrote welcome and all that stuff, helped me set up. Like, my kids is on board. And then my daughter, who's about to be 21 next week, when I have my pop-up shop, she's all involved. Like, she's helping me. She's calling people. She's doing this. She's setting up, doing my hair, nails, whatever. So I'm, my kids is involved with this. So now in their minds, it's like, okay, mom is about this life. Mom not just on social media, talking about it, on lives, talking about it. My mom really lived this. So now when you show them versus telling them, it makes a bigger impact. Show them versus telling them. Yeah. So I'm showing my kids. Huh? Like, if you start when they first... um. Like, cause I'm like, I, I'm just curious. Like, when you when you first had, cause you said your daughter's 21. Cause I want to know like the difference that you've seen, like before you had started investing in them, and like where you at now. Cause I'm pretty sure the investment, like the 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 atmosphere has changed tremendously. Mm -hmm. So how many, like, when did you start actually well, like, tapping in with them? Well, at one point, I never loved myself. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
Wow. Mm -hmm. I used to be 350 pounds. Mm -hmm. I wow. was like borderline diabetes, high blood pressure, all that stuff. And that right. runs in my family, right? right? So I really didn't love myself when I was like a teenager. Um, 18, I had my daughter 18. I didn't love myself. I was still partying, drinking, sleeping around, whatever. I didn't love myself, right? My mom, she also didn't love herself because she didn't teach me how to love myself. My grandmother, nobody knows that, right? So if they don't know it, then they can't teach it, right? So after so much self-destruction, at some point your back does get uh, against the wall and you're like, okay, what's next? So now you got to start seeking that higher power. And in order to love yourself, you really got to seek God and the universe, right? So trust me, I was fighting my daughter. We was arguing all the time. I'm yelling at my kids, screaming, cursing at them all the time. No, that's not love. Love. You're supposed to love your kids. You're not supposed to be screaming at them, fighting with your kids all the time. No. So I really had to take a step back. I had to take a step back and say, what is going to happen if I keep up with this bullshit? So I had to tap into self-love. Self-love is key. You can't say you want to be a millionaire and you don't love yourself. You can't say you want to impact the world, but you don't even love you. You can't say you love your man, your husband, your kids, and you don't even love you. Even when I go into the schools and I teach the kids, I teach girls on self-love. That's a key thing. I was in a relationship where my mate didn't love herself and it delayed my process. As soon as we went separate, the podcast popped up. Mm -hmm. Everything just started opening up mm -hmm. and I kept trying to figure out what was it. Mm -hmm. But when yep. you don't have self-love, like she said, love conquers all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But don't you think that, like, when you're, like you said, going back to your environment, you said you, you, you got to align with the right people. Mm -hmm. Like you said, relentless, when you were with your your, your partner, mm -hmm. if some of the people around you are not doing the same thing as you, mm -hmm. you're going to, it, it, it's going to feel weird mm -hmm. because there, it's going to throw you off balance. Mm -hmm. That's why it's very important. Mm -hmm. well, like with, with your circle, mm -hmm. with people who you talk to, people mm -hmm. who you interact with, mm -hmm. what you're listening to, right? With the words that you're speaking to yourself, because I had to learn that at a, at, I mean, I'm 33 now, right? And I just now start, I'm starting to learn how to love myself, right? So that's how thank you for sharing that, coach. right? That hit me here, right? Because I thought that I was like, okay, I, I love myself. I thought that, oh, I know, like, I mean, trust me, the nails, the hair. That, that's the outer appearance. Mm -hmm. that, 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 people see that. But on the inside, mm -hmm. if you broken, if you if, 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 if it don't make, like, like you, you, you sleeping at night and your heart is heavy, that's a problem. Well, the thing is, let me tell you, let me touch on that sleep thing. So if you don't love yourself, you're mad, you're bitter, and you don't have a future, you can't sleep good at night. You are. That's like a FYI, right? If you're not happy with yourself, you don't love yourself, right? And you're worried about everything. You're bitter. You do not have a good night's sleep, nice. right? And Les Brown said this. He said 67% of people in the world do not sleep. They literally are walking zombies because they worried about this. They worried about bills. They worried about job. They worried about X, Y, and Z. They worry about the future. And you can't get a good night's sleep like that. Right. So sleeping is also a part of self-love. Self-care is also a part of self-love. Right. Right. It's, it's, it's the truth. Right. You need sleep. I don't believe in. Oh, no, I'm asleep when I'm dead. Oh, I don't need any sleep. OK, well, you're going to die before you even get some goddamn sleep. How about that? No. Right. So, I mean, we got to We got to really take this self-love and self-care thing seriously. And this is when my relationship changed with my children. When I started to see my worth and started to understand my worth, now I can help them see their worth. You see your girls. You know, they you know what I'm saying? My girls are confident. I don't have, they don't have no problem with no confidence issues. My daughter is one of the champions in cheerleading. She's going to, yeah, she's going to the competition Sunday. Shop. Yeah. Man. You know what I'm saying? And she's in kickboxing. Wow. She can knock a nigga head off. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on. Dude, 
So, I mean, but I didn't have that. My mom wasn't able to put me in that position, right? She wasn't. My mom didn't love herself. Unfortunately, you know, life, things happen to her. You know, stuff happened. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I'm glad I was able to recognize that because of the personal growth and development, right? That I had, I was able to recognize that I hated myself, right? That I really didn't love myself. That's why I was fat, right? Because even, even here's the thing, people that are overweight don't really love themselves, unfortunately, right? And I hate to say it, but it's true. If you're overweight, right? You look at yourself in the mirror. Now you can have the confidence and say, you know what? I think I look good, but deep down inside you like, nah, this ain't it. This ain't it. My clothes don't fit right. I can't, I'm smelling. And when you big, you have a certain smell. Like let's, let's keep that a hundred. Like you have a certain right. smell when you big. So I had a certain smell. You know what I'm saying? So I couldn't say, oh no, I don't smell like that. No, you have a certain smell, sis. You know what I'm saying? So again, and it's a lot of, you know, you got to lift up this to wash on this. It's too much. Okay. It's too much. Okay. So when you love yourself, you taking care of yourself physically too. You know what I'm saying? So it's everything. It's health, wealth, love, and happiness. Right? It's everything. So you can't be saying I'm impacting the world, but you can't even walk up the block. Don't work like that. Uh-uh. You know what I'm saying? So again, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, maybe somebody need to hear that. But when you too big, I mean, let's just say you are too big. Right? Let's start thinking. Do you 100% love who you are when you look in the mirror? Because when I was 350, I didn't. Coach, I feel a little bit that I understand what you're saying mm -hmm. because I mean I, I'll be I'm, I'm three thirty mm -hmm. and um but I don't want to stay at three thirty. Of like, course when not. I look in the, when I look in the mirror now, it took me a long time to get to the level where I am, mm -hmm. and being healthy is a priority for me now. Mm -hmm. I don't want to continuously walk around and be out of breath. Right. I don't want to deal with diabetes. Right. I don't want to deal with, um, right. like, you know, all the, the stagnants that come with being overweight. Right. But when I, but when I finally sat down and began to process mm -hmm. what was happening with all the things that were triggering in mm -hmm. my life, mm -hmm. I began to, that's when my mindset changed. Mm -hmm. And, um, Weight is still like it's not it's not a problem for me, mm -hmm. but I'm still going. Um, it's a process that I'm still going through. Right, but, right. But I don't want to stay here. But what I, I can genuinely say, and no, I'm not happy with my weight, but mm -hmm. I'm happy with the person I'm mm -hmm. looking at. Mm -hmm. But like, I'm happy mm -hmm. with seeing who who she is in right. the mirror. Right. Well, let me ask you this, lady. Mm -hmm. How much weight have you lost, though? Well, when I started my, I, this has been. I let me let you say that. I, I come from an obese family. Like, mm -hmm. obesity runs in my family heavy. And I've been o overweight all my life. But, um... Uh, oh, I knew this shit was going to happen. Yeah, I can't get on. I can't get on. Mm -hmm. I already know what's going on. I was like...
because my phone, that's why I never go live on Instagram. My phone always end up cutting off. I don't know why. I don't know why. All right, but I'm back. Yeah, we glad you're back. <clears throat> yeah, we back. All right. So, 